Now, I must apologise, everybody, for that frozen glitch, but we are broadcasting here out of the Mara Triangle in the middle of Kenya, a magnificent country in East Africa. Now, let me just bang on a little bit more about what I was saying earlier. You're looking at a crocodile, of course, and the crocodile you may see is, well, eating on the rotting carcass of a wildebeest. Now, across the way there, jean -Dry, you can see a lot of wildebeest, and they are thinking about crossing the river. Now, all in all, there are 1.4 million of those chaps knocking about the Serengeti Mara ecosystem. Uh, not, that's not all of them there, obviously. That's probably a couple of hundred. And during this time of the year, sort of between the end of June and, well, hopefully the beginning of October or end of October, most of the herd is up here in the Mara Triangle, which is about 510 square kilometers, 51,000 hectares or so of uh, really beautiful plains, East African plains. It's the most spectacular piece of land. And that's where they are now. And they knock about here, and then around about the end of October, they turn south as the rains start to fall in the Serengeti, and they go down into Tanzania. And this whole ecosystem, the Mara Serengeti, is about 20,000 square kilometers, which is roughly the same as the Great Kruger National Park. The big difference being, of course, is that there are no fences around any of this. They move on into conservancies in much the way, same way that the Sabi Sand and the Timbavati form conservancies of the Greater Kruger National Park. And so it really is difficult to actually even size this incredible wilderness that we're now in. Uh, we don't know if those wildebeest are going to cross. They go to and from during the course of the season, many of them uh, looking a little reticent about going across, and that's, of course, because they want to avoid the fate of their friend uh, that you can see being devoured by that great dinosaur of the deep now. He's just, oh, there he is. He's eating a piece of rotten wildebeest as we speak. Now, crocodiles, in case you don't know, are unable to chew, and so they have to kind of... Um, eat rotting flesh. They can't eat good fresh meat. And all around the crocodile you can see the fish rising and helping the crocodile devour that hapless wildebeest. Now we are as live as Jamie and Taylor, which means we'd love to hear from you. Hashtag Safari Live, questions at wildearth.tv. And I think it, you may have missed it, but once the Sabi Sand Drive wraps at half past ten this evening, Central African time, we will continue depending on what we have. And I will just give you a little introduction to the lions that we're hoping to see a little bit earlier, at least a little bit later, because we did see them earlier. The Kichwa Timbo Pride is what we're going to be looking at. Six lionesses and three males, uh, for pop. interestingly, very closely linked to the old Marsh Pride from Cat, Big Cat Diaries. And these males are known as the Marsh Coalition males because they came from that pride. So that's a nice link with the Big Cat Diaries. And then all around, just the most incredible diversity and numbers of animals. Darlene, you say this is your first time to the Mara, and you say thank you for this opportunity. Well, Darlene, it's just such an incredible joy to be able to bring it to you from here. Like I said, 1.4 million wildebeest, but that's not all that knocks around here. There are close on 400,000 um, uh, Thompson's gazelle, 300,000 zebra, same species as you'll probably see in the Sabi sand today, slightly different subspecies, they're called the Grant zebra, and their most notable thing, well, the most notable thing about them, Jean-Rey, look at these two hippo facing off here, and the zebras which we will see, you'll see, have got a slightly Roman nose and no shadow stripe, these two hippopotamus are not happy with each other. Two bulls fighting over a territory, it must smell rather nastily of rotting wildebeest, I would imagine. Hello, Lynn. You've asked a wonderful question because it will enable me to deal in one fell swoop with a common misconception. You say, how long is the migration? The migration, Lynn, is continuous. It never ends. And so what happens is in a 12-month period, is basically in January and Febru February, they're down in the southern plains of the Serengeti, the Wildebeestar, that is, and they carve there. Hundreds of those calves, much like the impala of the Sabi sand, get taken out by lions and cheetahs and various other predators in that area. And then during the course of the year, they move up the western fringes of the Serengeti through Maswa and then up into the western corridor around about sort of uh, April and May. That's the western corridor of the Serengeti. And then 
as the sort of those grasses become totally denuded they head up into the Mara Triangle where we are now and the Maasai Mara fur west of us and uh, then the, they have the, what they call the short rains, and the short rains fall here, and they feed around here. And then normally, sort of around about the end of October, they go back down to the eastern fringes of the Serengeti, and then further down towards Serenera, which is the central part of the Serengeti, before they fetch up again to carve down. Oh, look at that crocodile rolling. Isn't that amazing? That's how they rip their carcasses apart. They turn over like that. I might have to take a picture, everybody. You must see the lens I've got here. <laughs> it's not mine, of course. A person of my photographic skills doesn't deserve a lens like this. Anyway, so that's the migration lens, and so it's continuous. And it is relatively unpredictable, you know. When we got here two weeks ago, well, it looked like there were at least 1.4 million wildebeest in this area. We haven't managed to find anything like that number here now. Some of them seem to have headed back into Serengeti already, and others seem to have gone north into some of the conservancies of the Mara Triangle. Anyway, we've had good rain here over the three days that we've been here, and we're hoping that that is what is going to attract the wildebeest here. Apparently, that's what sort of dictates the micro-movements that they make in and around these areas. So, we'll see. But regardless, we've got lots to show you here. We've got these crocodiles, obviously. We're going to spend some time with that special pride of lions. That is really disgusting. And we're also going to show you some topi, hopefully. Wonderful antelope, bizarre looking things. Look at that crocodile go. And Thompson's gazelles and elephants here. And just a beautiful scenery. Hello Genevieve in New York, you've asked a very good question. You say, when a crocodile attempts to kill something, does it then uh, have to have a rest before it can try again? Yes, it does to a certain extent. I mean, it's just, it's physiology. I mean, essentially works exactly the same way as, as yours and mine does. Uh, it has a certain store of energy and glucose and sugars that allow it to expend energy and eventually that will run out and it will have to lie down and recoup and digest some food or in the crocodile's case often digest quite a lot of fat that's amazing and and then they can go again but they do need to rest and remember a crocodile the size of the one you're looking at now he's not the biggest that there is here but he's pretty large they can go for now wait for this little statistic that i'm going to give you they can go for up to two years without food, which I think is absolutely astounding. Ooh, there he goes. He's having a lovely meal. Now, the Mara River is perennial, and as you know, in the Sabi sand, nothing in the way of a perennial river. We do, of course, have the Sand River and the Sabi River, but they never flow as strongly like this for anything like as long and that allows all these crocodiles to grow so very large on the proceeds largely of this migration right let's head across to jamie patterson it's been a while since i've seen the ladies of juma so give them my regards and we'll catch up with you in just a little while Do you think James is referring to Taylor and myself or the Inkahumas when he speaks about the ladies of Juma? I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'll give the Inkahumas James' 